Hello everyone, welcome to Chosen of the Gods 6k 2v2. We're on to the second round here between Minds On, Comms Off, and Team Trench Rats. So far, what we've seen is the first round went to Minds On, Comms Off. They were able to control most of the map. Unfortunately, Trench Rats, they focused too much into one part of the map, and that was ultimately their downfall. We'll see how they do. We're on Yukon now. I'm also joined here by Darg. Wow, okay, and we, <laughs> we're going to see how both these teams manage this. Lots of OSP ships. Well, yeah, oh, we're already in there. We're going to see... What's my camera doing? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we got Quiz with some Voxels here. Uh, Darg, would you be so kind as to run through the fleets the second we come in? Sure thing. We're dropping down here with... Uh, the Trench Rats on the OSP team. We've got a C90 container liner with decoy boxes on top and on bottom, or not a container liner, a uh, monitor. Monitor with containers on it. Decoy boxes. They do have a CLN though, man. Loving seeing the CLNs at these tournament games. And they're being played well and effectively too. ANS at a glance has two battleships and an extra. Oh my god, what is with these people and their 6Ks and the two battleships? I'm gonna lose my mind. Rock containers, deco containers, no standard containers on this container liner on the OSP team. Three guys also supporting the container liner, or rather using the container liner to support a monitor swarm, much as OSP did last time. Mine's on comms off. Any container stack, Bellbirds, C90 T30s, Grazers. C90 T30s, Grazers, oh yeah. There's, the hybrids are not going to be plunging through this. At least I would assume not with all the Pavises, the Grazers. And I think there was an AM inbox as well. Got quite a bit of plasma and even some 250s on the nose. This is a pretty well-rounded little monitor blob. Very dangerous. Colin Jackrat has more ships than you can shake a stick at. How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, 19. six by three. Yeah, so that's 19. Thank you, Vastel, for counting that up very quickly he's got looks like oh <laughs> but this is not a dispersed cat fleet we have five tugs in a tug blob a torpedo tug blob it's been quite a while since i've seen anybody break out the classic tug blob uh tug's got a bit of a nerf a while back because they're a little too hegemonic on the torpedo tug blob front but, uh, and I haven't really been in vogue since. Well, look at that. He's also got a couple gun sprinters, shuttles rather, spread around the map. EWR, 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 a lot of EWRs. This team is going to know where everything is. Very important on Yukon. There's a lot of crevices you can hide in. But with having sensor coverage over a pretty large chunk of the map like that, you can kind of guesstimate where someone might be hiding. And you really got to watch for beam battleships, as we have seen on previous tournament matches on this map. So it's got an LRT. And then one, two, three, four, five multi-mission tugs. Woo! This man better have the micro. E-point denial? Perhaps? Is it going to happen? One hit and the second one? Scuffle going down on Echo. That's hybrids, wow, e awake hybrids. A very expensive. If that that would have been a really nice advantage because OSP didn't have anything else to go after that echo point, but now of course they know they have killed the sh sh shuttle, but uh, they know that Quiz Quiz has come for that push. Let's start going through the ANS fleet really quick. This battle is already heating up. ANS has two 450 battleships. I was expecting these to be beam battleships, and they look pretty stripped down, too. They got some soft kill on them. Just, oh boy, a bunch of chaff. Not a great drive setup. Oh, yeah, these are really stripped down. These are meant to be 450 delivery devices. This has got to be like 2,000. comes across them. Imagine that. The talk is so That would be nuts. <laughs> This has got to be like 2,000 points of battleship, and they are, even though they're very close together, they have, uh, they've gone nuts with the soft kill, and if, but uh, tor command, torpedo tugs don't care about soft kill. They just don't. Uh, even if you have interruption jammers, which I don't think these do, yeah, they do have one, uh, the torps going into the broadside of a battleship. Like, the battleship's too big. They saw secondary as well. Probably. They quite a few lighthouses. Make them go dead. Snipes also has... A Axford with sidearms. Oh man, this team is incredibly greedy. 
on the anti-missile capabilities. A couple rocket containers out on the Echo Point, but the Sprinter's going to soft kill that. And then a Pinard ship and a Bullseye ship hanging out on kind of the Delta Bravo side of the map. Quiz Ooh, quiz. Cap about to be denied here by missiles. It's another 450 and 120 side arm at Axford. No, these are stone walls. These are stone walls. They're stone walls and 120s. Got it, got it, got it. So not horribly greedy. He's also got the Voxel and a couple of missile sprinters, which we saw earlier. Bullseye hang up. Jam sprinter. All right, all right, all right. Standard beam ship for defense, and it's positioned well too to cover that alpha point. He's probably spotted by now, though. He's even got a Sarissa offset. It'll be good for sniping down those rocket containers as they come in. And his missile ships have four two split on the torpedoes and hybrids. They have spent all spent all their hybrids in that attempt to clip, or at least the two that we just looked at have any attempt to clip off the ship down on Echo. He's got... Man, how many of these do you have, man? Alright, got a couple of these are naked capping ships. So yeah, he's only got four to total. To it, the E-capper managed to fire off an obscene amount of AMMs to deny the uh, the MMT from killing it. Fired about 12 AMMs there, just at these uh, size 2s coming in. Well, so I hope he's got more. Let's take a quick look. He does. He's ran out. He's got actually. He's got one left. Unless Looks that's like they're not missile. firing. Yes, yeah, so these uh, these at command valves are gonna go for the chaff. Yeah, not good enough off. track on this to get the command validated validation successfully. Gonna maintain the ecap. Sprinter's gonna get out alive. Monitor blob. In the meantime, only been going through those fleets. Monitor Blob's been getting shape on attacking Charlie and exerting pressure on Alpha. The Torptal Blob is actually camped inside the OSP's spawn, covering the Delta Point and able to pounce onto Alpha if something big gets in there. This, normally, this would be kind of a little questionable because you don't really put that much on Delta, but it looks like Snipes has taken the battleships and are riding the spine of the big rock here on Yukon. And if those get up to the top of the spine and try to control Charlie Alpha Delta from up here, those Torp Tugs can jump on top of the battleships and obliterate them. Mm -hmm. One thing to note on the uh, on the right there, or at least on by the DB point uh, line, MMT there tried to kill another sprinter, but unfortunately last second lost the com uh, the command validation, the track dropping, and the missiles veered off in the last second, saving the sprinter. This uh, tug now getting destroyed by a 450 HE, extremely effective against tugs. I'm glad people have started to figure that out. Yeah, uh, it's been obvious for a while. It's been obvious uh, for a very long while, but mm -hmm. a lot of people are convinced, yeah, ah, it's a small ship, it misses, Four but guys. because it's so boxy, it's got such a dump truck ass, even for its armor <laughs> value, uh, that unlike the Sprinter or the Shuttle, HE will burst inside the tug, even getting hit in broadside like this. Yeah, the monitors here... Um, what, it looked, they're dealing with the uh, the pop uh, lock vet. Yeah, this is a lock vet up here on the top, and it's getting... <laughs> bombshell the hell. Uh, seems like it just ran out of range though, so can't shoot it any longer. But they're Look. shifting around to the C point. Yeah, it looks like the monitors the did change hands. Oh, are attacking cool. Charlie, and they're yeah. also going to get shape on the Axford and the two Solomons up on top. If those things don't retreat, it looks like the Solomons are maybe backing off just a little bit and changing their thrust to go after the Delta point. But as we've already said, that's a massive risk with those tuck. Torp dogs waiting in the wings. Oh man. I need that. I need it. I so want to see it, dude. So much. Can you imagine what their comms are going to be like? They're just like, oh yeah, okay. Uh, we've accounted for most of their points, so there's been a little bit missing. They'll go for this D point, and then. <laughs> and I'm dead. Cool. Great. Uh... I lose. <laughs> this is like the the OSP equivalent of a beam battleship right now. It just right the corner. <laughs> yeah, it like, really oh, no. is. It really is. It's probably around the same points investments, because one of these Torp Tugs, I guess it depends on how many reloads they have, but this is probably going to be, oh yeah, six missiles. If there's six in each of these, and we got five ships. That's probably seven or eight hundred points a ship. Unfortunately, on the C point, we are going to see this Tug, I mean the Sprinter, lose its life trying to defend it. Unfortunately, a lot of monitors, the yeah, command validation is no longer kicking in because it's well, died, so there's nothing to send them signals to. 
And that's it over for them. C point is going to go back to well, to Team Trench Rats. They're going to make it even for the income, but unfortunately they are still behind by about a hundred, over 100 points now on victory points. Torp Tugs are on the move. Ooh, yes they but are. But they are going, going down. down? I What's think the they're I think they're trying to go for the Axford and the voxels on the lower part of the map, but I think that's a mistake. They're not gonna be able to catch these. Trench rats might be getting a little antsy with those capital vessels on the lower side of the map and losing control of their own natural point. They are down by about a hundred points, which will push you to do something like this, but they if they they'd be much better off just YOLO rushing the battleships or waiting on the delta point for the battleships to get kind of close. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if they're yeah, going down here, they're going to get spotted too. Yeah, we know everything that's going on, unfortunately. They they don't know. They can see like, the battleships. They can see the battleships, but they can't see what else could be around it. There could be a beam destroyer in white right near, like by the B point, for example, or near near the uh, the end of the B point spire. And that could actually, that's quite a big of a bit of a distance now. Never mind. Yeah, the BBs have moved up quite considerably. Yeah, they're in the halfway mark of this massive rock. So they could sneak up on them, yeah. Or don't even see them as charge. Monitors have secured the Charlie point, and they are flipping back around side the rock. They're gonna catch these battleships in the flank. Looks like the left battleship has angled itself to points bow towards the monitors, and it is the closer ship. So if the monitors fire at that, they're gonna be less effective. But the glad brat. Playing below by the monitors. These are built built specifically by snipes to deal with monitors. However, there's only oh, the one right. of them. They, they will be able to get the shots. Yeah, so BBs are starting to fire, starting with high explosives because it is generally better to fire high explosive monitors. You might see the armor value of a monitor and think fire AP, but in most cases, if a monitor is looking right at you, you fire high explosive out of it. Uh, 450 specifically. Yes, 250, you still want the AP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very important distinction, very important monitor. distinction. <laughs> Battleships backing away. They might get zoned out of the map by these monitors, or they might pull the monitors into the beam Axford range. I know this Axford is designed to kill monitors, but I don't think it can take on... How many is this, like seven? <laughs> That's six in a shuttle. No, it's seven. And a shuttle. D point. Oh, managing to get the sprinter onto the D point, and there's nothing in position to kill it. C90 is going into these columns, but not really doing that much damage. Killing a birthing. Cap is rip. Been denied again, probably by the rocket container. We ended up missing that. Two times in a row that um, Team uh, Minds on Comms have been unable to take this point. Looks like the Torp Tugs are going to intercept the Voxel and Sprinter down on the lower side of the map. We don't see people use the lower side of Yukon very often. There's just a couple of missile people who hang out down here, and apparently Colin Jackrat is one of those. But Quiz Quiz has brought his Voxel and his Sprinter over here. Could be a big problem. Yeah, just firing at this lighthouse uh, shuttle for the moment, but um, I think he's going to go for it. He's going to go for this Vauxhall, try to kill it rather than um, deal with the BBs, which uh, it does give them a bit more freedom on the bottom side of the map. But you gotta you have need, you, need, you need to get the value out of killing. BBs. OSP like, doesn't have the tools to deal with the battleships aside from these torp tugs. They have a little bit of plasma on the monitors, I think. Oh no, that was the last game. I don't... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. They do have a good amount of plasma on the monitors, but uh, you can't always rely on that. You really need something to, to deal with those. It some, oh, it's actually withdrawing. It is not interested in getting involved in these monitors, it seems, or it knows that it doesn't want to die for it. Um, moving back to here means that it, it can poke and fall back. Meanwhile, if it was still in this position when the monitors ran into the corner, then it, you know, it's in a awful position they, they can actually turn around the beam the expert can actually get out of the charlie point and take it for more or less free yeah. team uh trench rats making a very similar mistake they made last game i mean they've spread their assets out a bit more but they're in the same severe cap disadvantage oh we got some size ones being fired by the torque tugs here 
at the Voxels. They're wake, <laughs> wake missiles, unfortunately, and not hitting the mark. So that's going to force these ships to throw on the brakes to try and soft kill the wake missiles, although they're just... I don't know. I, I don't think the S1s are actually that threatening because you can defend her and RPF those pretty effectively. But that's probably the intent. Mm. So right now we see these BBs. They're basically both Torps out. Torps out waters. on the oh, voxels. They're semi-active. Go. They're going for the chaff. The spotlight has not been oh, there we go. properly managed. Oh, no well, goodbye, Voxel. See you later. Yeah, turn the defenders off because of the wake missiles, I think. Only a few of them fired, actually, as well. Yeah, yeah so only, only a couple lands. There yeah, was one that died more. early. Some more coming out. Ooh, where are these? These are just I going no straight idea. into the... Ooh, that's... Jamming, that's it. They're being jammed. Aha, uh -huh, yep. The homing cannot do anything because they are being jammed. They will not they be able do to not have home on jamming semi-active missiles. Oh, man, a colossal mistake. Have Taking the gamble, taking the, the points cringing, dropping that HOJ cost, but it is never, ever, ever worth doing that. It is not worth it because you will get... Like this... These uh, tugs now rendered entirely ineffectual by this one, uh, well, I guess two blankets here. And it's a massive yeah. waste of missiles, which these tugs oh, do don't have many of. For home on jam as well, or would it be two more points for home on jam? One. I can't remember. One point, yeah. And they don't have, they, it's not like they have decoys or anything else. And they have no pin aids. So. It's so, always yeah, worth the HOJ. Point. Yeah. Oh my C point God. is now going to change hands back to mines on comms off. This is going to become a, a four cap, it looks like. Yeah, that's real bad. The battleships are losing the fight with the monitors slowly. Uh, the plasma is starting to build up. The C90 is starting to come in, but it just doesn't matter because ANS has four points and OSP has zero. They don't even need the mid cap. Rocket containers falling for the chaff. Might hit the upper BB though. No, never mind. Rocket containers out to defend Charlie. I don't think that's gonna work either. This team has brought mines on comms off. Has brought tons and tons and tons and tons and tons yeah, and tons of chaff. Yeah, all for the chaff. So much chaff, dude. Oh my goodness. The well, monitor is continuing to push the battleship. Uh, Tugboat, oh, EWR tug is very far forward and it's going to, well, pay for it. I think he's going with Torp tugs. Uh, not well. They've killed the Axford and they're killing the Sprinter. They have to kill the Voxel. But, <laughs> or the, the Voxel, right? The Voxel. But they're almost entirely out of torpedoes. Yeah, and they are getting shot from two different directions here. So the, these, uh, are, these are basically spent. These are not going to be doing anything more meaningful for the rest of the game. Uh, and yeah. you cannot spend a Torp Tug Blob to kill a single Voxel and a Jam Sprinter. You cannot do that. That is a massive, 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 massive support. Yeah, this is about that was my concern with those going down in there. That, that would be extremely unworth. This is like double the point cost trade going on. Oh yeah, it's probably more than that. That's around 2,500 points for the Torp Tugs. Maybe more. But oh my goodness. One of the BBs now less and less able to run away because all the breaking, well, all the thrusters in general have been destroyed in the front of the ship. Uh, the other uh, Solomon, I mean, pulling further and further back. Oh yeah, the Solomons are going to lose this fight with the monitors, no question. It's just going to take another, I want to say eight to nine minutes. Oh, unless the rocket containers speed things up. Looks like they've no. mostly gone for chaff, but this angle. Yeah, only a couple lands, not enough Sunday, to really oh, do Sunday damage. Hits there in the bottom, though, knocking out one, nearly destroying. One well, the they're just faster plasma, is what the rocket containers are for the battleships. Mm -hmm. B point going back to Team Trench Rats. Unfortunately, though, this is only going to slowly try to, you know, put gauze over the wound. They're not going to be able to. <laughs> make Trench Rats three hundred points down. Yeah, Three hundred points. points down. 
and they're missing a lot of oh it's got walking into the beams now here from the the beam destroyer so all these to tugs they're, they can't really contribute much anymore but they're now going to die which is more yeah, it's not going to take long set of the points or the beam dd take those out although it will take a while if it's not properly switching okay there we go they are going to be taking the e point back as well which will slow things down again for them but it, it all it's it's looking very rough a 300 point deficit is not something you can come back from unless you have a really strong military advantage and trench rats doesn't have that at this point their only combat assets are really the monitors and the container liner and the monitors are busy in nowhere space having an honor duel with a pair of solomons which which they are going to win but this doesn't control any caps this doesn't help them win the game mm -hmm. uh, and the rest of their fleet is either dead or spent or in these like really weird positions and getting executed yeah a cap now finally starting to go for mines on comms off so they will still have a three cap lead despite e cap changing hands it's gonna it's gonna take up real real fast a couple of rock containers going after the alpha points to try and cover it but it's too late Wait. oh yeah don't really see a way that OS can use from here not unless those monitors just leave the battleships two or three minutes ago and go start capping things if they cap things, then, uh, you know, that, that is the victory condition for the game. Would put them back in the game, because yeah, they need a four aside to win. from the battleships, ANS doesn't really have much that can deal with the monitors. The Axford can sort of do that, but not super fast. And not without losing some health on that beam. And it's also in a place that doesn't really cover any points. But it, it doesn't matter. It's too late. This game is over. Yeah. Um, very unfortunate to see, though, that, you know, they, it was a very interesting opener. If the Torp Tugs were able to, you know, bring the hell out of the, uh, the songs, well, that would have been a very fun uh, scene to see. But we, the, we were robbed. Yeah, there is a fundamental positioning mistake here. Is that the Torp Tugs really, really, really should have set up to deal with the battleships and not bothered with any of the small fry on the map at all, like a voxel. And the monitors should have been hanging back and uh, zoning things with their high firepower and strong anti-missile capabilities. I think what had to have happened in the voice comms was uh, three cats declared, oh, I can, I can take the Solomons and win, which is correct. Uh, and then the Torp Tugs went elsewhere to fight elsewhere with it, but the team, the Trench Rich didn't recognize that it would take forever to kill Solomons like this, and they, they just lose on the cap war in the meantime because they don't have, by dumping all their points into these two huge combat blobs, they don't really have the assets or the investment to win in the cap fights. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see any other points change hands here in the meantime? E point is probably going to have this axe for. Nope, it's not pushing around to it. it See, they're very content with just holding what they've got at the moment. Alright, we will see you in the after action report. Hello, and welcome to the battle report. 11k to the container liner. Just at the top this time instead of the bottom. Beam, beam ship. A lot of the damage numbers kind of don't matter because the fight didn't really matter. What mattered was the was the cap game and ANS had more money invested in that than OSP did, and so that was kind of it. Mm-hmm. A lot of the torque tugs doing very underwhelming damage as well. Morning. What well, is the open. combat power? The BBs are 2,081 combat power. 2,026. Wow. Yeah, my guess is roughly 2k. 
we got smoked. That was painful. Yeah, the positional. So y'all had some like really good tactical moves, but your overarching strategic plan in both games kind of kind of failed fundamentally. How it goes sometimes. I'm gonna be honest. In the second game, it's kind of my fault. I saw two 450 ships, and I went, oh, that's probably Axfords. You'd run two Axfords together. And I was like, I can kill two Axfords really quick, mop them up. Then there were two Solomons, and I went, well, I'm here, so might as well. And I attacked them when I really should have just left them alone while they're yeah. doing nothing. The overcommitment. That's just uh, how it goes. Well, you can spend, like, a week planning, and the moment the game starts, it's just, like, that second part of your brain takes over, and you just start going. Yeah, it's all no, instinct no. after that. It's kind of sad I wasn't able to deny E at first, but I managed to get it. Uh, yeah, I, I watched that. It was very close. I'm uh, very glad to have had a lot of like light ship combat in this time. Uh -huh. yeah, you get very violent on the small scale. Yeah. You guys brought a lot of light assets coming into both do. matches. Yeah. That Jack is a great cap player. I think I'm a cap player. Yeah, yeah. I think you just got a little outplayed because. Uh, Let's not go patting ourselves on the back here. I, I, I will be honest. Quiz is a, a quite good at cap game. Really good. Yeah, I've been playing yeah. a lot since I came back to Nub. I was really surprised to see th that tug swarm. Just I was like, oh, they just popped up when I rounded the corner of my CL. I was like, oh, okay. I'll Gotta make a full confession away. and say I spent probably two or three days drawing up that swarm there. The missiles. I was going insane, pacing around in my room, gripping at my hair. I said, what do I do? How do I shoot torpedoes at them? Have them not get destroyed by hard kill and avoid active decoys. I don't even know if you guys brought active decoys. I didn't bring any. No, I had none. That's, that's, that's kind of disappointing to hear, if I'm being honest with you. Because I spent God knows how much time thinking about that. Unfortunately, it didn't have home on jam on those uh, torpedoes, and so just jamming was able to defeat the uh, semi-active homing. That's true, that's true. I thought about it, but I actually don't really know what all those validators do on all those seekers. So it's actually not a validator. It's a secondary seeker type. They can bring, it. It's a subtype of ARAD. So you have an option when you select an ARAD Seeker to change it to HOJ, which is Home on Jam. And it combos really well with semi-active because the primary thing that defeats semi-active missiles is jamming. So semi-active Home on Jam together makes for a very cheap Seeker combination that is highly resistant to soft kill. I wish I had a pen. I would have written that down just now. Yeah. I'm going to... Something kind of funny, I guess. The mistake I made in the first game is I undercommitted. In the second game, the mistake I made is I overcommitted. I need, I didn't commit the right amount either time. Yep, that is a very common problem, especially when you're playing uh, the combat-heavy fleets. It's really easy to dive something or to park in a corner and cover a point with just too much meat. Hard. It's hard going up against people who uh, have bigger brains and are smarter than you, you know? Two, two rear admirals. Two, well, they're just, I mean, that's that's time put in. But they were just better. It's really just a matter of understanding your positioning. Both of you have had some really good positioning plays thus far in the tournament. I mean, that's why you're all the way out here in the semifinals out of, what, 13, 14 teams? Well, Something like that. we got a bye for the first round, and yeah. I consider the exhibition match to be our first match. That's fair. No, we did, we did yeah. win it, so that's fair. Yeah. That's what I've been uh, telling myself anyway. We could play a third game on Tumblebeam for the lols. <laughs> I don't uh, know if I want to get... I don't think there's any need for that. But yeah, okay. You guys did but, very well in the first game. Um, I mean, you guys got the four cat right off the bat, and you guys did well on annihilating our light assets, especially like taking A from us and also D, I think, really early on. Just put us kind of behind, and we had to really make the play to push far. Those decoys had my head spinning. Yeah. 
because I mean, I'm sure you saw, but like, you know, that first salvo of torpedoes, one went to your ship, and I think like two went to decoys, and then after that, I was like, just, I had to wait, I had to wait and see what was happening. Yeah, I was. And I, <laughs> I feel and like I, I was you. this close to taking out that container liner in the beginning. You had it tracked a few times was, throughout that game. I was, I I was looking know. for it so hard. You're actually the closest you got was you got a sprinter within five kilometers of it. Three cat made the call and he was like, "It's right yeah. there, it's right there." But I, I was already moving I, on to E. The sprinter was moving towards, I think, the D point, and I saw a bunch of mines on D point, and then I saw the CLN, and I went, "Well, you can't cap D because there's a bunch of mines there, so might as well just throw your sprinter at the container liner and hope it dies. Hope you win with it." I was. I was that close, but it didn't happen. I mean, no, it was that's, kind of the, that's kind of the definition of both of those games. It was a, we were so close to breaking like a threshold of where we would have like dominated the game, but we just couldn't make it. Yeah. Uh, like, like if you managed to torp one to Axworks instead of my CL, that would have been the uh, big, uh, uh, definitely even the game more. And or even on game. the battleships that I was chasing down. Yeah, I'm really surprised that the Torp Tugs didn't go after the BBs. Um, uh, I, will, I wanted to. I will admit, Jack, it's kind of my fault for that. I saw your Tugs going down while I was chasing the battleship, and I'm like, he should probably move those up, but I just didn't make the call. I should have. The fact is, is that in any match that I'm in, I'm all over the place moving stuff. It was unfortunate that what I saw first were Axfords down low that I wanted to get, which is why I started going there. Yeah. And when the Vauxhall was in front of me, I was like, well, you just got to take the shot now, otherwise you're not going to get a future shot later. And that thing survived, even so. It still had that auxiliary steering going. The battleships are so tanky. I, the guns kept coming back, so I had to stay there to deal with them. Oh, and the bottom guns never died. I tried so hard to kill those bottom guns, and they just never died. Yeah, the big secret with fighting battleships is don't make them go away, and then that's it. That's what you well, want to do. They're so tanky. I, I hate that about them. It's yeah, so it's, frustrating. it's pretty frustrating. But the way to deal with it is make them stop playing the game, and then you yeah. can just cap things for free because they're really slow. Yeah, it was in the back of my mind of the whole game was uh, the battleships are fine. I can just turn the entire monitor blob around and go do something else. But I was like, but I could kill them, get them out of the game permanently, or at least kill their drives and leave you... them stuck. And that just it never happened. You had enough jamming that you probably could have just made it so the battleships will never be able to hit your MN ball because I was never going to push in close with those things. I only had two jammers, and I knew you were probably sending offsets to my location. Uh, yes, I had offsets. I fucked up and got them killed, though, so <laughs> I don't know if you saw. Yeah, I also knew there was, like, an expert hiding nearby, and I was like, that expert's going to probably come around soon. I'm going to hope it friends into the monitor blob, and I can just turn around and kill it instead of the battleships. It's never happened. You played Valor well no, there. I, I saw that you were, like, really focusing on the bbs because you were just burning right past like straight away from the c point so i was like all right i'm just gonna take my expert away and just yeah it was because you took the expert away is why i didn't why i went for the battleships because i was oh, i wanted to kill that expert i was hoping i was gonna stay there yeah i was the i was debating internally like if i should engage but i think just pulling away and just pulling that whole mn ball away from the because how many points was that fleet worth like 6k or sorry like that was the whole thing 4, 4k it's my entire fleet the entire fleet's like uh 4.5k and then i spent like a 1.5 on the container liner right so yeah. like my, my bb's total i think even out to about 4.2k so it's like i'm just removing those points from you know either side and i'm pretty i was, I was pretty confident that my axe could fight everything else that existed yeah. on the on the field. Those were cheap BBs, and they still last that long. Oh my god! So All right, pardon for interrupting, uh, but I think we'll, uh, you, of course, uh, keep talking afterwards. But I think we'll wrap it up here as regards for the uh, the audience and everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Of course, there will. I'm right now. I'm talking to one of the players. The match for the second round may have to be postponed. 
Uh, I'm talking to one of the players right now, the one who had the PC difficulties. So we're going to figure out that in a moment. In an hour's time, 40 minutes time, I'll be able to tell you if the match will be postponed tonight or if it might be moved to later today or it might be pushed back to tomorrow. That depends, of course, on a few factors such as if, you know, this or that. Um, not explaining what the exact factors are, but... Yeah, look forward to the second match regardless. Thank you again for everyone who came. Uh, thank you, Darg, of course, and thank you, Not So Normal, for uh, helping uh, keep everything functioning. Good luck, Quiz Quiz. Good luck, WZ. Uh, I'm going to be rooting for you in the finals. I hope hey, you man, win. Yeah. Yeah, thank Since you. we can't be there, win for us. Yeah, well, you'll Name? have our spirit, our spirit yeah. of yeah. silly fleets. Name one of your ships after me, please. Thank you. The three cats burger. <laughs> <laughs> You have our spirits, and also yeah. now you have the responsibility. Yeah, you have <laughs> no names. hesitation. Yeah. You're, you can have two A-caps named three cats and call them Jack Rat. They're going to yeah. die instantly. I thought about it. I was like, you know, I could just go around and collect the names of Nebulous players, put them on my ships. But then I was like, but I don't really know anybody. But, All right. Uh, um... my name. Yeah, you all can keep an eye on community events. We'll post there uh, if it's called off or it's, rep or it's repositioned or what the heck happens. Uh, yeah, see y'all later. And mm -hmm. either way, there will be a the finals happening uh, next week at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, Puppy, can you come down with me to general chat as well? I'm going to depart. Stay safe, everyone, and avoid hard narcotics. Bye, y'all. We're closing it for now. Drink water. Good oh, night. Nice. Call your mom. I'm <laughs> Three kids. Drink water. Call your mom. I don't care. <laughs> Fucking you, ball. Oh my goodness. So those games were relatively one-sided, but as we discussed, oh, that's probably bad. In the interaction report, there was a reason for that. Just both teams just made some plays that didn't really quite. Pan out, man. I thought in that first game that uh, Trench Rats was going to just take the W off the bat. They blitzed 4-1 to one on the points, and usually you just win off of something like that. But mine's on comes off, managed to pull it back. It's very impressive. Two really good games. And the second one, y'all didn't have to sit through the like last 15 minutes of that, so... That would have been a short and sweet and fast one, too. I hope you enjoyed. I have a Discord, which this tournament has been hosted out of. We are in the main Deb Nebulous Discord for a couple of these to bring it to even more people. We had about 40 people on the call at the peak of that. Uh, or over the average of that, and we peaked at around 60. So a lot of folks interested in this competitive Nebulous stuff. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I always get really excited when I'm casting and I start, as I start to come down, my whole body gets like sleepy. Very silly. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I have a Discord link down in the description. If you want to participate in future tournaments, come on down there. We have been doing most of the competitive slash tournament activities over the past year and a half. If you... And we're going to be doing more in the future. Oh, yes. Oh, we're going to be doing more in the future. If you want to support these endeavors and the time and the energy that I throw into these sorts of things, uh, I have a Patreon as well. Vastel is actually doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the heavy lifting for this one. Uh, but as always, I'm kind of Supporting everything that goes on around the uh, the Nebulous community, and especially the Coliseum. So that's a little way to support me. If you are not interested in either of those things, if you don't want to talk to me, if you don't want to talk to any of the Coliseum people, if you don't want to talk to any of the normal Nebulous people on the Nebulous Discord, if you just like watching these videos, that's fine too. I'm glad. It's nice to create something that people enjoy. I'll see you in the battle space. Good night. <laughs>